Thank you. Let the record reflect that the Attorney General answered in the affirmative. Now please proceed with your opening statement. Good morning, Chairman Durbin, Ranking Member Grassley, and distinguished members of this committee. Thank you for the opportunity to appear before you today. In my address to all Justice Department employees on my first day in office, I spoke about three co-equal priorities that should guide the Department's work. Upholding the rule of law, keeping our country safe, and protecting civil rights. The first core priority, upholding the rule of law, is rooted in the recognition that to succeed and retain the trust of the American people, the Justice Department must adhere to the norms that have been part of its DNA since Edward Levy's tenure as the first post-Watergate Attorney General. Those norms of independence from improper influence, of the principled exercise of discretion, and of treating like cases alike are what define who we are as public servants. Over the last seven months that I have served as Attorney General, the Department has reaffirmed and, where appropriate, updated and strengthened its policies that are foundational for these norms. For example, we strengthened our policy governing communications between the Justice Department and the White House. That policy is designed to protect the Department's criminal and civil law enforcement decisions and its legal judgments from partisan or other inappropriate influences. We also issued a new policy to better protect the freedom and independence of the press by restricting the use of compulsory process to obtain information from or records of members of the news media. The second core priority is keeping our country safe from all threats, foreign and domestic, while also protecting our civil liberties. We are strengthening our 200 joint terrorism task forces, the essential hubs for international and domestic counterterrorism cooperation across all levels of government nationwide. For FY22, we are seeking more than $1.5 billion, a 12% increase for our counterterrorism work. We are also taking aggressive steps to counter cyber threats, whether from nation states, terrorists, or common criminals. In April, we launched both a comprehensive cyber review and a ransomware and digital extortion task force. In June, we seized a $2.3 million ransom payment made in Bitcoin to the group that targeted Colonial Pipeline. Keeping our country safe also requires reducing violent crime and gun violence. In May, we announced a comprehensive violent crime strategy which deploys all of our relevant departmental components to those ends. We also launched five cross-jurisdictional strike forces to disrupt illegal gun trafficking in key corridors across the country. And to support local police departments and help them build trust with the communities they serve, our FY22 budget requests over $1 billion for grants. We are likewise committed to keeping our country safe from violent drug trafficking networks that are, among other things, fueling the opioid overdose epidemic. Opioids, including illicit fentanyl, caused nearly 70,000 fatal overdoses in 2020. We will continue to use all of our resources to save lives. Finally, Keeping our country safe requires protecting its democratic institutions, including the one we sit in today, from violent attack. As this committee is well aware, the department is currently engaged in one of the most sweeping investigations in its history in connection with the January 6th attack on the Capitol. The department's third priority is protecting civil rights. This was a founding purpose when the department was established in 1870 Today, the Civil Rights Division's work remains vital to safeguarding voting rights, prosecuting hate crimes, ensuring constitutional policing, and stopping unlawful discrimination. This year, we doubled the size of the Civil Rights Division's voting section, and our FY22 budget seeks the largest ever increase for the division, totaling more than 15%. We have appointed department-wide coordinators for our hate crimes work. We have stepped up our support for the Community Relations Service. We are also revitalizing and expanding our work to ensure equal access to justice. In addition to these core priorities, another important area of department focus 
is ensuring economic opportunity and fairness by reinvigorating antitrust enforcement, combating fraud, and protecting consumers. We are aggressively enforcing the antitrust laws by challenging anti-competitive mergers and exclusionary practices. In FY22, we are seeking a substantial increase in funds for the division. We likewise stood up a COVID-19 fraud enforcement task force to bring to justice those who defraud the government of federal dollars meant for the most vulnerable among us. In sum, in seven months, the Justice Department has accomplished a lot of important work for the American people, and there is much more to be done. Thank you for the opportunity to testify this morning. I look forward to your questions.